Max Born was a German physicist and mathematician who was instrumental in the development of quantum mechanics. He also made contributions to solid-state physics and optics and supervised the work of a number of notable physicists in the 1920s and 1930s. Born won the 1954 Nobel Prize in Physics for his fundamental research in quantum mechanics, especially in the statistical interpretation of the wave function. Born in 1882 in Breslau, then in Germany, now in Poland and known as Wroclaw, Born entered the University of Göttingen in 1904, where he found the three renowned mathematicians, Felix Klein, David Hilbert and Hermann Minkowski. He wrote his Ph.D. thesis on the subject of stability of elastica in a plane and space, winning the university's philosophy faculty prize. In 1905, he began researching special relativity with Minkowski, and subsequently wrote his habilitation thesis on the Thomson model of the atom. A chance meeting with Fritz Haber in Berlin in 1918 led to discussion of the manner in which an ionic compound is formed when a metal reacts with a halogen, which is today known as the Born-Haber cycle. In the First World War, after originally being placed as a radio operator, he was moved to research duties regarding sound ranging due to his specialist knowledge. In 1921, Born returned to Göttingen, arranging another chair for his longtime friend and colleague James Frank. Under Born, Göttingen became one of the world's foremost centers for physics. In 1925, Born and Werner Heisenberg formulated the matrix mechanics representation of quantum mechanics. The following year, he formulated the now standard interpretation of the probability density function for psi asterisk psi in the Schrödinger equation, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1954. His influence extended far beyond his own research. Max Delbruck, Siegfried Flugge, Friedrich Hund, Pasqual Jordan, Maria Goepert Mayer, Lothar Wolfgang Nordheim, Robert Oppenheimer, and Victor Weisskopf all received their PhD degrees under Born at Göttingen and his assistants included Enrico Fermi, Werner Heisenberg, Gerhard Herzberg, Friedrich Hund, Pasqual Jordan, Wolfgang Pauli, Leon Rosenfeld, Edward Teller, and Eugene Wigner. In January 1933, the Nazi party came to power in Germany, and Born, who was Jewish, was suspended. He emigrated to the United Kingdom, where he took a job at St. John's College, Cambridge, and wrote a popular science book, The Restless Universe, as well as atomic physics, which soon became a standard textbook. In October 1936, he became the Tate Professor of Natural Philosophy at the University of Edinburgh, where, working with German-born assistants E. Walter Kellermann and Klaus Fuchs, he continued his research into physics. Max Born became a naturalized British subject on August 31, 1939, one day before World War II broke out in Europe. He remained at Edinburgh until 1952. He retired to Bad Permont, in West Germany, and died in a hospital in Göttingen on January 5, 1970. Early Life Max Born was born on December 11, 1882 in Breslau, now Wroclaw, Poland, which at the time of Born's birth was part of the Prussian province of Silesia in the German Empire, to a family of Jewish descent. He was one of two children born to Gustav Born, an anatomist and embryologist, who was a professor of embryology at the University of Breslau, and his wife Margarethe, Gretchen, née Kaufmann, from a Silesian family of industrialists. She died when Max was four years old, on August 29, 1886. Max had a sister, Kathy, who was born in 1884, and a half-brother, Wolfgang from his father's second marriage, to Bertha Lipstein. Wolfgang later became professor of art history at the City College of New York. Initially educated at the Koenig Wilhelm Gymnasium in Breslau, Born entered the University of Breslau in 1901. The German university system allowed students to move easily from one university to another, so he spent summer semesters at Heidelberg University in 1902 and the University of Zurich in 1903. Fellow students at Breslau, Otto Toeplitz and Ernst Hellinger, told Born about the University of Göttingen, and Born went there in April 1904. 
At Göttingen he found three renowned mathematicians, Felix Klein, David Hilbert and Hermann Minkowski. Very soon after his arrival, Born formed close ties to the latter two men. From the first class he took with Hilbert, Hilbert identified Born as having exceptional abilities and selected him as the lecture scribe, whose function was to write up the class notes for the students' mathematics reading room at the University of Göttingen. Being class scribe put Born into regular, invaluable contact with Hilbert, during which time Hilbert's intellectual largest benefited Born's fertile mind. Hilbert became Born's mentor after selecting him to be the first to hold the unpaid, semi-official position of assistant. Born's introduction to Minkowski came through Born's stepmother, Bertha, as she knew Minkowski from dancing classes in Königsberg. The introduction netted Born invitations to the Minkowski household for Sunday dinners. In addition, while performing his duties as scribe and assistant, Born often saw Minkowski at Hilbert's house. Born's relationship with Klein was more problematic. Born attended a seminar conducted by Klein and professors of applied mathematics, Karl Runge and Ludwig Prandtl, on the subject of elasticity. Although not particularly interested in the subject, Born was obliged to present a paper. Using Hilbert's calculus of variations, he presented one in which, using a curved configuration of a wire with both ends fixed, he demonstrated would be the most stable. Klein was impressed, and invited Born to submit a thesis on the subject of stability of elastica in a plane and space a subject near and dear to Klein which Klein had arranged to be the subject for the prestigious annual philosophy faculty prize offered by the university. Entries could also qualify as doctoral dissertations. Born responded by turning down the offer as applied mathematics was not his preferred area of study. Klein was greatly offended. Klein had the power to make or break academic careers, so Born felt compelled to atone by submitting an entry for the prize. Because Klein refused to supervise him, Born arranged for Karl Runge to be his supervisor. Wold M. R. Voigt and Karl Schwarzschild became his other examiners. Starting from his paper, Born developed the equations for the stability conditions. As he became more interested in the topic, he had an apparatus constructed that could test his predictions experimentally. On June 13, 1906, the rector announced that Born had won the prize. A month later, he passed his oral examination and was awarded his Ph.D. in Mathematics Magna Cum Laude. On graduation, Born was obliged to perform his military service, which he had deferred while a student. He found himself drafted into the German army, and posted to the Second Guards Dragoons Empress Alexandra of Russia, which was stationed in Berlin. His service was brief, as he was discharged early after an asthma attack in January 1907. He then travelled to England, where he was admitted to Gonville and Caius College, Cambridge, and studied physics for six months at the Cavendish Laboratory under J. J. Thomson, George Searle and Joseph Larmor. After Born returned to Germany, the army reinducted him, and he served with the elite first, Silesian, life cuirassiers great elector until he was again medically discharged after just six weeks' service. He then returned to Breslau, where he worked under the supervision of Otto Lummier and Ernst Pringsheim, hoping to do his habilitation in physics. A minor accident involving Born's black body experiment, a ruptured cooling water hose, and a flooded laboratory, led to Lumier telling him that he would never become a physicist. In 1905, Albert Einstein published his paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies about special relativity. Born was intrigued, and began researching the subject. He was devastated to discover that Minkowski was also researching special relativity along the same lines, but when he wrote to Minkowski about his results, Minkowski asked him to return to Göttingen and do his habilitation there. Born accepted. Toeplitz helped Born brush up on his matrix algebra so he could work with the four-dimensional Minkowski space matrices used in the latter's project to reconcile relativity with electrodynamics. Born and Minkowski got along well, and their work made good progress, but Minkowski died suddenly of appendicitis on January 12, 1909. The mathematics students had Born speak on their behalf at the funeral. 
Bourne attempted to present their results at a meeting of the Gottingen Mathematics Society a few weeks later. He did not get far before he was publicly challenged by Klein and Max Abraham, who rejected relativity, and forced to terminate the lecture. However, Hilbert and Runge were interested in Bourne's work, and after some discussion with Bourne they became convinced of the veracity of his results, and persuaded him to give the lecture again. This time he was not interrupted, and Voigt offered to sponsor Bourne's habilitation thesis. Bourne subsequently published his talk as an article on the theory of rigid bodies in the kinematics of the relativity principle, which introduced the concept of Bourne rigidity. On October 23 Bourne presented his habilitation lecture on the Thomson model of the atom. Career Berlin and Frankfurt Bourne settled in as a young academic at Gottingen as a privat doesn't. In Gottingen, Bourne stayed at a boarding house run by Sister Annie at Dalmanstrasse 17, known as El Bocarebo. The name was derived from the first letters of the last names of its boarders, L for Ella Philipson, a medical student, Bo for Bourne and Hans Balza, a physics student, Ka for Theodore von Karman, a privat doesn't, and Re for Albrecht Renner, another medical student. A frequent visitor to the boarding house was Paul Peter Ewald, a doctoral student of Arnold Sommerfeld on loan to Hilbert at Gottingen as a special assistant for physics. Richard Courant, a mathematician and privat doesn't, called these people the in group. In 1912, Born met Hedwig, Hedy, Ehrenberg, the daughter of a Leipzig University law professor, and a friend of Karl Runge's daughter Iris. She was of Jewish background on her father's side, although he had become a practicing Lutheran when he got married as did Max's sister Kathy. Despite never practicing his religion, he refused to convert, and his wedding on August 2, 1913 was a garden ceremony. However, he was baptized as a Lutheran in March 1914 by the same pastor who had performed his wedding ceremony. Born regarded religious professions and churches as a matter of no importance. His decision to be baptized was made partly in deference to his wife, and partly due to his desire to assimilate into German society. The marriage produced three children, two daughters, Irene, born in 1914, and Margarethe, Gritli, born in 1915, and a son, Gustav, born in 1921. Through marriage, Born is related to jurists Victor Ehrenberg, his father-in-law, and Rudolf von Gering, his wife's maternal grandfather, as well as Hans Ehrenberg and is a great uncle of British comedian Ben Elton. By the end of 1913, Bourne had published 27 papers, including important work on relativity and the dynamics of crystal lattices, three with Theodore von Karman, which became a book. In 1914 received a letter from Max Planck explaining that a new professor extraordinarius chair of theoretical physics had been created at the University of Berlin. The chair had been offered to Max von Law but he had turned it down. Born accepted. The First World War was now raging. Soon after arriving in Berlin in 1915 he enlisted in an army signals unit. In October he joined the Artillery Prüfungs Commission, the army's Berlin-based artillery research and development organization, under Rudolf Leidenberg, who had established a special unit dedicated to the new technology of sound ranging. In Berlin, Born formed a lifelong friendship with Einstein, who became a frequent visitor to Born's home. Within days of the armistice in November 1918, Planck had the army release Born. A chance meeting with Fritz Haber that month led to discussion of the manner in which an ionic compound is formed when a metal reacts with a halogen, which is today known as the Born-Haber cycle. Even before Born had taken up the chair in Berlin, von Law had changed his mind and decided that he wanted it after all. He arranged with Born and the faculties concerned for them to exchange jobs. In April 1919 Born became Professor Ordinarius and Director of the Institute of Theoretical Physics on the Science Faculty at the University of Frankfurt am Main. While there, he was approached by the University of Göttingen, which was looking for a replacement for Peter Debye as Director of the Physical Institute. Theoretical Physics Einstein advised him, will flourish wherever you happen to be, there is no other born to be found in Germany today. In negotiating for the position with the education ministry, 
Born arranged for another chair, of experimental physics, at Gottingen for his longtime friend and colleague James Frank. Gottingen. For the twelve years Born and Frank were at Gottingen from 1921 to 1933, Born had a collaborator with shared views on basic scientific concepts a distinct advantage for teaching and his research on the developing quantum theory. The approach of close collaboration between theoretical physicists and experimental physicists was also shared by Born at Göttingen and Arnold Sommerfeld at the University of Munich, who was Ordinarius Professor of Theoretical Physics and Director of the Institute of Theoretical Physics also a prime mover in the development of quantum theory. Born and Sommerfeld not only shared their approach in using experimental physics to test and advance their theories, but Sommerfeld, in 1922 when he was in the United States lecturing at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, sent his student Werner Heisenberg to be Born's assistant. Heisenberg again returned to Göttingen in 1923, where he completed his habilitation under Born in 1924, and became a privat dozen at Göttingen. In 1925, Born and Heisenberg formulated the matrix mechanics representation of quantum mechanics. On July 9, Heisenberg gave Born a paper entitled Über Quantum Theoretiskum Dudum Kinematischer und Mechanischer Beziehungen, Quantum Theoretical Reinterpretation of Kinematic and Mechanical Relations, to review, and submit for publication. In the paper, Heisenberg formulated quantum theory, avoiding the concrete, but unobservable, representations of electron orbits by using parameters such as transition probabilities for quantum jumps, which necessitated using two indexes corresponding to the initial and final states. When Born read the paper, he recognized the formulation as one which could be transcribed and extended to the systematic language of matrices, which he had learned from his study under Jacob Rosanes at Breslau University. Up until this time, Matrices were seldom used by physicists, they were considered to belong to the realm of pure mathematics. Gustav Mie had used them in a paper on electrodynamics in 1912 and Born had used them in his work on the lattices theory of crystals in 1921. While matrices were used in these cases, the algebra of matrices with their multiplication did not enter the picture as they did in the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics. With the help of his assistant and former student Pasquale Jordan, Born began immediately to make a transcription and extension, and they submitted their results for publication. The paper was received for publication just 60 days after Heisenberg's paper. A follow on paper was submitted for publication before the end of the year by all three authors. The result was a surprising. The result arises because matrix multiplication is not commutative. This formulation was entirely attributable to Born, who also established that all the elements not on the diagonal of the matrix were zero. Born considered that his paper with Jordan contained the most important principles of quantum mechanics, including its extension to electrodynamics. The paper put Heisenberg's approach on a solid mathematical basis. Even Born was surprised to discover that Paul Dirac had been thinking along the same lines as Heisenberg. Soon Wolfgang Pauli used the matrix method to calculate the energy values of the hydrogen atom, and found that they agreed with the Bohr model. Another important contribution was made by Erwin Schrödinger, who looked at the problem using wave mechanics. This had a great deal of appeal to many at the time, as it offered the possibility of returning to deterministic classical physics. Born would have none of this, as it ran counter to facts determined by experiment. He formulated the now standard interpretation of the probability density function for psi asterisk psi in the Schrödinger equation, which he published in July 1926. In a letter to Born on December 4, 1926, Einstein made his famous remark regarding quantum mechanics. Quote, quantum mechanics is certainly imposing but an inner voice tells me that it is not yet the real thing. The theory says a lot, but does not really bring us any closer to the secret of the old one. I, at any rate, am convinced that he is not playing at dice. End of quote. This quotation is often paraphrased as God does not play dice. In 1928, Einstein nominated Heisenberg, Born, and Jordan for the Nobel Prize in Physics but Heisenberg alone won the 1932 prize for the creation of quantum mechanics, 
the application of which has led to the discovery of the allotropic forms of hydrogen, while Schrödinger and Dirac shared the 1933 prize for the discovery of new productive forms of atomic theory. On November 25, 1933, Born received a letter from Heisenberg in which he said he had been delayed in writing due to a bad conscience that he alone had received the prize for work done in Göttingen in collaboration you, Jordan and I. Heisenberg went on to say that Born and Jordan's contribution to quantum mechanics cannot be changed by a wrong decision from the outside. In 1954, Heisenberg wrote an article honoring Planck for his insight in 1900, in which he credited Born and Jordan for the final mathematical formulation of matrix mechanics and Heisenberg went on to stress how great their contributions were to quantum mechanics, which were not adequately acknowledged in the public eye. Those who received their Ph.D. degrees under Born at Göttingen included Max Delbruck, Siegfried Flugge, Friedrich Hund, Pasquale Jordan, Maria Goebert Mayer, Lothar Wolfgang Nordheim, Robert Oppenheimer, and Victor Weisskopf. Born's assistants at the University of Göttingen's Institute for Theoretical Physics included Enrico Fermi, Werner Heisenberg, Gerhard Herzberg, Friedrich Hund, Pasquale Jordan, Wolfgang Pauli, Leon Rosenfeld, Edward Teller, and Eugene Wigner. Walter Heitler became an assistant to Born in 1928, and completed his habilitation under him in 1929. Born not only recognized talent to work with him, but he let his superstars stretch past him. To those less gifted, he patiently handed out respectable but doable assignments. Delbruck and Goebert Mayer went on to win Nobel Prizes. Later Life In January 1933, the Nazi Party came to power in Germany. In May, Born became one of six Jewish professors at Göttingen who were suspended with pay, Frank had already resigned. In twelve years they had built Göttingen into one of the world's foremost centers for physics. Born began looking for a new job, writing to Maria Goppert Mayer at Johns Hopkins University and Rudy Leidenberg at Princeton University. Offers soon started to pour in, and he accepted one from St. John's College, Cambridge. At Cambridge, he wrote a popular science book, The Restless Universe, and a textbook, Atomic Physics, that soon became a standard text, going through seven editions. His family soon settled into life in England with his daughters Irene and Gritli becoming engaged to Welshman Brinley, Bryn, Newton-John, Olivia Newton-John's parents, born as Olivia's grandfather and Irene is her mother, and Englishman Maurice Price respectively. Born's position at Cambridge was only a temporary one, and his tenure at Göttingen was terminated in May 1935. He therefore accepted an offer from C. V. Raman to come to Bangalore in 1935. Born considered taking a permanent position there, but the Indian Institute of Science did not create an additional chair for him. In November 1935, the Born family had their German citizenship revoked, rendering them stateless. A few weeks later Göttingen cancelled Born's doctorate. Born considered an offer from Pieter Kapitsa in Moscow, and started taking Russian lessons from Rudolf P. Ailes's Russian-born wife Genia. But then Charles Galton Darwin asked Born if he would consider becoming his successor as Tate Professor of Natural Philosophy at the University of Edinburgh, an offer that Born promptly accepted, assuming the chair in October 1936. In Edinburgh, Born promoted the teaching of mathematical physics. He had two German assistants, E. Walter Kellerman and Klaus Fuchs, and together they continued to investigate the mysterious behavior of electrons. Born became a Fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh in 1937, and of the Royal Society of London in March 1939. During 1939, he got as many of his remaining friends and relatives still in Germany as he could out of the country, including his sister Kathy, in-laws Kurt and Marga, and the daughters of his friend Heinrich Roche von Traubenberg. Hetty ran a domestic bureau, placing young Jewish women in jobs. Born received his Certificate of Naturalization as a British subject on August 31, 1939, one day before the Second World War broke out in Europe. Born remained at Edinburgh until he reached the retirement age of 70 in 1952. He retired to Bad Permont, in West Germany, in 1954. In October, 
he received word that he was being awarded the Nobel Prize. His fellow physicists had never stopped nominating him. Frank and Fermi had nominated him in 1947 and 1948 for his work on crystal lattices, and over the years, he had also been nominated for his work on solid state, quantum mechanics, and other topics. In 1954, he received the prize for fundamental research in quantum mechanics, especially in the statistical interpretation of the wave function something that he had worked on alone. In his Nobel lecture he reflected on the philosophical implications of his work. Quote, I believe that ideas such as absolute certitude, absolute exactness, final truth, etc. are figments of the imagination which should not be admissible in any field of science. On the other hand, any assertion of probability is either right or wrong from the standpoint of the theory on which it is based. This loosening of thinking, locker room de Denkens, seems to me to be the greatest blessing which modern science has given to us. For the belief in a single truth and in being the possessor thereof is the root cause of all evil in the world. End of quote. In retirement, he continued scientific work, and produced new editions of his books. He died at age 87 in hospital in Göttingen on January 5, 1970 and is buried in the Stettfriedhof there, in the same cemetery as Walter Nernst, Wilhelm Weber, Max von Law, Otto Hahn, Max Planck, and David Hilbert. He was survived by wife Hetty, who died in 1972, and children Irene, Gritli, and Gustav. His great-grandchildren include songwriter Brett Goldsmith, singer Tata Goldsmith and racing car driver Emerson Newton-John.